Hi everyone, I'm Lisa DeFrancesco, the Water Science Educator for Regional Water Authority in New Haven. I'm going to be taking your class on a field trip called Project Water. On the day of the trip, I'm going to pick you up in our Project Water bus and we're going to travel along the Connecticut River from Middletown to Old Saybrook. Along the way, we're going to make stops and test the water for dissolved oxygen, temperature, nitrates, and pH. When we're through, we're going to take a look at our data and determine how healthy the water in the Connecticut River is. Here are some important things you need to know for our field trip. You need to wear closed-toed shoes like boots or sneakers. Yay! And not ones that you're going to be upset if they get a little bit of dirt on them. No open-toed or slip-on shoes like flip-flops or sandals. Your shoes need to cover and protect your feet. You need to wear pants that come down to your ankles. Yay! No shorts, regardless of the temperature. There may be bugs and poison ivy, and your legs should be covered. We're going to be outside the whole day for the field trip, way longer than just standing at the bus stop waiting. Make sure you dress in layers, and you bring a jacket or a sweatshirt. I drive the bus. The bus stays there the whole day. You can leave all the stuff on the bus. You don't have to carry it. But you're going to be a lot happier that you have it if you need it. You also need to bring a lunch and something to drink. Money won't help. There's no vending machines in the woods and we're not stopping anywhere. But please don't bring your cat. They don't have thumbs and they make lousy lab partners. We'll be doing two classroom programs before your field trip. In the first one, today's class, you will learn what we're testing for to determine water quality and watersheds. For the second class, we'll cover the water quality testing we'll be doing on the field trip. You'll practice using the testing equipment you'll have out on the day of the field trip. Let's get started with our water quality worksheet. This is going to give us a better understanding of the four things that we're testing for on the day of the field trip. The worksheet is completely blank. We're going to fill this in together. Let's pause the video here. Your teacher is going to pass out one worksheet to every student. The four large boxes with the pictures in it, those are the things that we're going to be testing for on the field trip. The small boxes above and below, well, those are just giving us a little bit more detail about each of the tests. In the large box with the cow next to it, write nitrates. In the small boxes above it, we're going to put three different things that can put nitrates into the water. In the first small box, write fertilizer. In the second box, write animal waste. And in the third box, write sewage. Fertilizer can wash into a river from people's lawns or farms. It's used to make plants and grass grow better. Animal waste can wash into the river if someone's not picking up after their pet or if there's a lot of like geese on a soccer field, you have a lot of goose poop. When it rains, that washes into the river. And sewage, that's the dirty water that leaves your house. We're really lucky. This country does a great job keeping our dirty water separate from our clean water. But every once in a while, a pipe breaks or there's a flood and sewage might get into the water. But that's normally not a problem. I wouldn't expect any of you to have heard of nitrates before. But if I told you nitrates got in the water from fertilizer, 
animal waste or sewage washing in. Do you think that's good or bad for the river? That's bad. We don't want any of that washing into the river. So somewhere near nitrates, write bad for a reminder. The next large box we're going to fill in is the one with the fish in it. In that box, I want you to write dissolved oxygen. In one small box above dissolved oxygen, write fish use it. In the other small box, write plants make it. Bonus question, does anyone know the name of the process that plants use to make oxygen? It's photosynthesis. Plants in the water use the same process to make oxygen as trees and plants on land. So if fish needed to breathe and plants make it, is dissolved oxygen good or bad? It's good. We want to find dissolved oxygen in the river. So write down good near dissolved oxygen. Moving to the bottom of the paper in the box with the sun and cloud in the thermometer, write water temperature. In one of the small boxes, write sun or shade. A sunny spot is going to give us a much warmer water temperature than one that's shaded by trees. In the other small box under water temperature, write seasons. The season is going to have a huge effect on water temperature. If it's winter, the water is going to be colder. It doesn't matter if the location is in the sun or the shade. We're not going to write anything for good or bad. Don't write neutral. We're leaving that blank. We would need to know what kind of fish live there to make that determination if the water temperature is good or bad, and we're not getting into that level of water study. In the last large box, write pH, small letter P, capital letter H. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. We're going to break it up into three chunks to fill those bottom small boxes. In the first small box under pH, write 0 to 6, acid. Some examples of acids are lemons, limes, oranges, that's citric acid. Citric acid also makes candies that you eat taste sour. There's acid in soda and batteries as well. In the second box, 
Write seven, neutral. Perfectly clean water is neutral, and so is the blood in your body. In the last box, write 8 to 14, base. Some examples of bases you may be familiar with are milk and household cleaning products like soap and bleach. pH is pretty complicated. All I want you to know for the field trip, that anything in the middle, right around neutral, is good. So somewhere near pH, write down 6 to 8 is good. We're done with the worksheets for today, so let's put those away. But you will see those worksheets again. At the beginning of the next class, you're gonna get the same worksheet. Some blanks are filled in, some aren't. You're gonna to need to fill in the blanks with what you remember, not from looking at the sheet that you filled in today. So make sure you take a look at that sheet and review it tonight. We're gonna be traveling along the Connecticut River watershed for your field trip. So it's important that you understand what a watershed is. They're all around us, but most people aren't familiar with what they are. Let's take a look at this diagram. A watershed is an area of land where all the water that's in it mixes together. Divide, separate one watershed from another. They're like puzzle pieces. Where one ends, another one starts. In this picture, you can see the divide is a dotted yellow line. That yellow line runs along the hilltops. Whatever water falls on one side of the yellow line goes into one watershed. And if it falls on the other side of the yellow line, it goes into a different watershed. Water from one watershed does not mix with water from a different watershed. Watersheds are a lot like these Russian nesting dolls. You start out with a big one, but inside there's a smaller one. And then inside that one, there's an even smaller one. If we wanna look at watersheds on a large scale, we can take a look at this map. This is North America, and it's divided into four watersheds. The area that's shaded in red, which is a good chunk of the United States, that whole area of land drains into the Atlantic Ocean. The blue area, that drains into the Arctic Ocean. The green area drains into the Pacific Ocean. And the area of land that's inside that orange, that drains into the Great Salt Lake. But if we look at a smaller scale, this map shows all the land that's inside the Regional Water Authority's district. There are 34 different watersheds just in New Haven County. Each different color represents a different watershed. All the land that's inside of one color drains into that river. But eventually, they all drain into Long Island Sound. Let's begin our activity to better understand what a watershed is. The class will be divided into five groups, and each group is going to get their own plastic bin. Earlier I had said that a watershed is an area of land where all the water collects together and mixes. Take a look inside your container. Is there anything in there that's preventing water from mixing together? No, it's flat. There's no hills, there's no mountains. So how many watersheds would be in your container now? Just one. All the water is gonna to mix together, so it's only one watershed. We're gonna pause the video here so your teacher can pass out some newspaper or white recycling paper to each student. When you get the paper, you're gonna take it, crumple it up, and place it into your watershed bin. It doesn't matter where they go, everyone's can be a different size, they can all look different. This is how we're gonna make our hills and mountains.
Once your group is done and all the paper is crumpled and placed inside your watershed container, we're gonna pause the video again and your teacher is gonna pass out one garbage bag to each group. Once you get this, you're gonna unfold it so it's a flat sheet of plastic. Don't open it up like you were gonna put it in a trash can. Take the garbage bag, place it on top of your container. Make sure the edges are tucked into the container. We're gonna spray water on it and we want all the water directed into the container. This is your final layer. So if you wanna push down some valleys or pull up a mountain, now is the time to do that. Next, we need to make a hypothesis, a prediction or a guess what you think is gonna happen. Your group is going to make a hypothesis of how many watersheds are inside of your model. So you're going to look for all the low areas and see what's separating them. When we spray water on this model, is water from one area going to mix with water from another? If you think it's going to stay separate, then those are two different watersheds. We're going to pause the video so you can make your hypothesis. How many watersheds do you think are in your model? Now that you made your hypothesis, we have to do an experiment to see how close we were. Sometimes you're really close, sometimes you're not. That's how science works. It's okay, this is not about proving yourself right. We're gonna pause the video so your teacher can pass out one spray bottle to each group. The water's blue just so it's easy to see on the white plastic. When you get the spray bottle, each person sprays 15 times. Make sure you are spraying over the whole model, not just in one spot. When everyone's had a chance to spray, without touching, you're gonna go back and look at your model and see where did water collect. We're not counting all these little tiny drips. That would give us a ridiculously high number. What you need to think about is where is that drip gonna go? Is it gonna stay there or is it gonna go down and mix in another area? You can see that some of these drips have been moving just as I've been talking. So that drip that went down there is part of that watershed. I think this one is gonna go down this hill and become part of that watershed. This drop just went over the edge onto the other side. So look at your divides, the high spots, look where the water collected, and see how many watersheds you think you have now that there's water in there, and it's a little bit easier to see. Now that you've had a chance to count your results, you could compare it to your hypothesis and see how close you are. You also have a better understanding of how the water moves through the watersheds inside of your model. What we're going to do next is put three really common things inside of your watershed model. You're going to pick a place for a farm, a city, and a reservoir. A reservoir is a lake where we store the water before we clean it to send it to you to drink. The goal of this is for you to figure out where the pollution might go inside the watershed. Because a farm and a city are always going to generate pollution. Anywhere there's people, we get pollution and it's gonna travel within its watershed. You're gonna get a green sticker to represent the farm, an orange sticker for the city, and a blue sticker for the reservoir. Once you get your stickers, you're gonna decide where you place them in your watershed model. I always decide where my reservoir is gonna go first, because it has to go where there's water. You can't put it someplace where there isn't water. Now keep in mind your goal is where you put your farm and your city. Pollution comes from those two areas and we wanna keep the pollution out of our reservoir. That's where the blue sticker is. So wherever you place these stickers, I want you thinking about where's the pollution from that area gonna go? Your goal is to keep it out of the reservoir. We don't want pollution in there. We're gonna pause the video here so your teacher can pass out the stickers to each group. Once you get them, go ahead and place them inside your model. But once you put them down, you can't move them. So make sure you're thinking about where you want to put them and where the pollution is going to go inside your model. We want to keep the pollution out of the reservoir.
You made your decisions, your stickers are in place, and now we have to see how successful you were. We're gonna put two common items on our stickers to represent the pollution. For the city, we're gonna put a couple drops of red food coloring right on the sticker. And for the farm, we're gonna place some dirt right on top of that sticker. But we can't be certain that the reservoir is clean until we spray water on those two locations. That's how we're gonna tell where the pollution moved within the watershed. You can see after we sprayed the water on the farm and on the city in my model, just a little bit of the dirt ended up washing into our reservoir. No pollution from the city made it there. We're gonna pause the video and let your teacher go around, put the dirt on the farm, the red food coloring on the city, and give it a spray. And we're gonna see how clean you were able to keep your reservoir. After your teacher went around and sprayed the water on the farm in the city, it was really easy to see where the pollution moved inside your model. Hopefully you made good choices and the water that's in your reservoir stayed clean. No pollution made it into there. If your reservoir was clean, that means your farm and your city were in a separate watershed from the reservoir. Now, in real life, it's not that simple. We can't say, oh, there can't be a farm or a city near a reservoir. If that was the case, half a Hamden wouldn't be here. But what we can do at the water company is make sure the businesses and the homes that are right along the reservoir are making good choices to help keep the water clean. We have to work together as a community to make that happen and to meet all of our needs. So that's all for today. Remember, next time I see you guys at the start of class, you're gonna see that worksheet again. So review that worksheet and I'll see you next time.